Hey YouTube, Mark Gunnison here, and in this video I'm going to show what I think is the best power supply for experimenting at home, the homemade power supply, and some of the features that I think are missing from some of the other power supplies that are uh, out on the market or uh, examples that people have built at home. So first I'm going to go over some of the features that I think are important, and then I'm going to show how I built it. So the first thing that you'll notice is that it has an on-off switch to cut the power to the circuit. I think that's really important. And then the second thing that I think is important is that you can see how much amperage your right there, how much amperage your, your circuit is drawing. And I, at first I didn't realize how important that is, but the more I started experimenting, the more important uh, that I could see that it was to see exactly how much amperage you were drawing as, as you were experimenting. You actually learn a lot. So here I'm gonna hook it up to a project that draws a little more amperage. It's got uh, a microprocessor, uh, uh, a display and then also a uh, GPS and you can see it's drawn 170 amps and of course uh, which makes sense because there's a lot more there but if my simple one started drawing 170 amps and that would tell me that there's a problem so now I'm going to plug it into the second feature that I think is very useful there I've turned off the power supply but I still have five volts to the 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 second the uh, power plugs down here that I can turn on and off. And what's nice is I don't have to have the power supply on, so you don't have to hear, listen to the fan, uh, and I can still use it. So you can see here I'm running through the volts. Uh, I've also added nine volts. The power supplies usually have 12, five, and three. And so I've added nine because an awful lot of projects that you run into run off of nine volts. Okay, so now I'm going to demonstrate kind of the usefulness of having a very accurate uh, uh, meter on there. So this is a 1K resistor, and of course we can all uh, pretty much guess what, what the meter is going to show. It's pretty easy. We just divide by 1,000. Uh, but you can see my meter's pretty accurate. Uh, it's, uh, but, but what I found is so useful is as I'm working on a circuit, uh, I don't have to hook up an amp meter. I can just look up at, at my power supply. And if all of a sudden my circuit's drawing, you know, like, like before I had that circuit that was drawing 170 uh, milliamps, if I'm doing something simple and it's drawn that much, I know that there's definitely a problem. All right, so now I'm going to show how I actually built this, and uh, it, it, I just pulled it together out of a bunch of scrap wood that I had in my garage, as you, you'll see once I give you a closer look. So there I'm unplugging the power supply cable, and uh, yeah, you can see I, it's, it, I didn't really use very good wood. So there's the power supply. It's kind of an older power supply. I've actually got quite a few, and I've found uh, the older ones, I think, work a little bit better than some of the newer power supplies. So if you can find a junky old one, that's probably a good thing. And uh, the, uh, the power supply isn't, I didn't screw it in. I just used that little wedge to, to stick it in there. So <laughs> I don't know if, that's, if that uh, is the best way to do it, but it uh, works pretty good. So it's kind of a mess you'll see as I, as I pull the wires out here. And everything's soldered. Those wire tie or wire nuts are just in there uh, for insulation. So if you look in the very back, you can see there's a rotary switch back there uh, that I used to switch the voltages. So you can see I've got a two-pole, five-throw switch, and one of the poles is used to, to turn the power supply on and off, and then the other one is to use to switch between the voltages. And uh, the first switch that I bought, these contacts were too close together, and as you turned it, they were both on at the same time, which caused the power supply to shut down. So it's important to get a switch where there's not contact between the, the switches as you're, as you're uh, rotating the dial. So this is the 9-volt regulator that I use, and I don't necessarily recommend this one, but at first I tried to use a 7809 9-volt uh, regulator, and I found that it was getting too hot, or at least I thought it was getting too hot, and I didn't really like how I was regulating. And uh, this is just a general-purpose auto voltage regulator to step down to 9 volts, and there's a bunch of them online. And I recommend using one of these instead of a, a L7809. 
So if you look online, this is the meter that usually pops up, and this is what most people use in their project, but I don't think this has enough precision. You can see it only goes to two decimals of the of the amper, amperage. So you just don't have the precision with this to if you want to use it for learning electronics and working with projects. So this is what I'm going with, and you can see it goes to four decimals of the amperage. And so this is really what you want if you're going to be learning electronics and experimenting. So I got information on how to do this from the DroneBot workshop, and this is a little display that he's got. Uh, so I used the ground wire, of course, for the ground, the three for the three, the five for the five, the 12 for the 12, and then I also used the uh, 12 volt to run the regulator. And then the green, I put that to the second pole, the rotary switch and grounded it to turn it on. And then uh, the purple is the five volt standby that I use when uh, the power supply is turned off. So here's his website. Highly recommend going there to get information on how to do this project. He has a very detailed website. He's also got videos. I like his videos because he kind of reminds me of my dad. Uh, so I'll put a link in the description to his website. I'm not putting links to other things because uh, the, I actually built this a while ago and I doubt the other links are even still available. But I highly recommend going to his website in order to figure out how to wire this up. And then the last thing I'll recommend is to build one of these. And those little clips are the, those are the little pegs that you get when you buy like a sensor and you have to solder those onto the board. So I just clipped two of them off at the end and put some heat shrink. Uh, and it works great, much better than alligator clips. And as you can see in the video, I've got a few other power supplies. Uh, but I find I use my homemade one most of the time when I'm just tinkering. And it's mainly just because it shows uh, the milliamps. The, the one to the right of it also shows milliamps, but it's not as accurate. Maybe I can adjust it or something to get it a little bit better. But, uh, uh, and it's just, I also like the fact that I don't have to turn it on if I'm just running 5 volts. So, so there you have it. That's uh, some tips that I have for building your own PC-based uh, power supply. And if you have any questions, go ahead and just throw them uh, in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.